Welcome back, Coastal Seafoods friends. Keen here today again, and we are going to be making some really beautiful sushi using some very beautiful fish. Here I've got some Aura King salmon, I've got some beautiful tuna. We've got both things on feature this week, just some gorgeous bluefin. We also have some ahi, really great stuff. And today I'm gonna to show you how to make some really cool sushi. So I'm gonna try a little sushi experiment and make like a checkerboard sushi roll, which should be a lot of fun. We'll do two different styles. So I'm gonna walk you through and, and get this going. So the first thing we wanna do is get our fish prepped and ready. It's always good to get as much prep as you can ahead of time before you start getting into the rolls. So I've got my tuna here. It's already got the bones out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna remove the skin, which I'm gonna do with my knife, just like so. You can see I left a little tab on there at the end, just to make this a little bit easier. Now this, if you wanted to, again, we don't wanna waste. So if you have leftover at the end, you can cut this off and use this for poke. Always a good way to go. Or you can do like a chopped spicy salmon roll or a mix of salmon and tuna kind of however you want to do. So we're good there. And what I want to do is I'm just going to cut this into kind of four pieces for my roll. Like so. Because I want this to go kind of lengthwise across my roll. And I'll show you why and what shortly. But again, I just want to get this all nice and prepped. So I got nine, four nice pieces here. I'm just going to add this back to my boat and I will come back to those. Now I've got my beautiful tuna and I want to cut it to about the same size as those salmon rolls. The closer we can get to the same size, the better. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my tuna and I'm going to cut it about as thick as that salmon was. So like so. I've got my nice piece there. I'll do another one, basically the same deal. I've got a little extra here, which again, we can use for poke or something else later. And I'm gonna cut these down to size so that again, we're about the same size as our salmon. It doesn't need to be perfect. This one's maybe a little big, so I'm gonna trim off a little extra. Again, sometimes when you're making sushi, you wind up with a lot of scrap because you're trying to cut things to specific sizes, which is totally fine. Again, this is all great for tuna poke, um, or you could make a spicy tuna roll, kind of however you want to do it is entirely up to you. All right, so now I've got my pieces cut. They're roughly the same size. So we're gonna get into actually making our roll. So I'm gonna get rid of this cutting board here. Get this off to the side. And then we're gonna go ahead and start. I've got my sushi rice already made here, you can see. Um, I just followed the package instructions. Usually you're looking at one part rice to one and a quarter parts water. Um, and always cook it to the package instructions. We talk about this in our sushi class a lot. Um, sometimes the rice is vary by brand to brand. So just do what it says and you're gonna get pretty good sushi rice. Uh, I've also seasoned it with a little bit of the sushi rice vinegar. This is the seasoned. You don't wanna use plain rice wine vinegar. Make sure you're using a seasoned sushi rice vinegar. And I just added a few tablespoons to this. You're not looking to make this super vinegary. You just want it to have a little bit of a sweet aftertaste. Um, and if you use too much, it's gonna get watery and soupy and you're gonna wind up with a vinegar and rice soup which is arguably not very delicious. So I don't recommend doing that. Got my sushi mat here. This is not required for making sushi rolls, but it does make the process a little bit easier sometimes. I like to use one, but again, you can roll it by hand. Uh, this really helps with the shaping of the roll. So if you do by hand, you might just have kind of a slightly misshapen roll, which I don't think the sushi police are gonna show up to your house and uh, give you a hard time. The other thing we've got is our nori. Now, nori has two sides. It's got kind of a rough sandpaper side, and then it's got a smooth, shiny side. You, whenever you're making a sushi roll, you want the rough side to be facing in. So we're gonna first trim this down a little bit. A lot of these nori come a little bit too big for your average size roll. I mean, it's gonna depend on what you wanna do and what you wanna put in your roll, but we are still looking to make kind of bite-sized pieces here. 
So for that, again, I want to, I usually trim like an inch off the top just to make it a little bit easier and more manageable to eat. So now I've got a bowl of water. This is crucial when making sushi. You always want to have a bowl of water. This is going to help prevent the rice from sticking to your hands. If the rice sticks to your hands and you go to put it down, when you pull your hand away, the rice will pull off. And when the rice pulls off, you run the risk of tearing the nori, and it just becomes a lot harder and more complicated. So we wanna make sure that our hand, or the rice doesn't stick to our hands as much as possible. So the water really helps here. So I'm gonna dip my hands in the water and kind of rub them off a little bit because I also don't want them wet. Water can ruin your nori uh, and make it impossible to work with. So you gotta be very, very careful. Got about a handful of rice here. I'm gonna set it down right in the middle of my nori. I'm gonna use my hands to kind of fan it out and push it into place like so. Now you don't wanna do this with hot rice either. You want your rice to kind of come down to room temperature before you start working. And what we wanna do is go edge to edge on three sides of the nori and leave like an inch tab at the top that we're gonna to use to seal. Now this is for a pretty standard uh, traditional sushi roll. Uh, where the nori is gonna be on the outside. We're also gonna do an inside out roll after this. So I'll show you how to do that as well. These are all things that we cover in our sushi classes, which we are really hoping to get back to at some point. Um, but we'll definitely let you know when that comes available. If your hands feel like they're getting sticky, you can always add a little bit more water, rinse that rice off, again, rub it. You don't want your hands soaking wet, you just want them a little bit damp and then continue to kind of fan this out. We're not smashing the rice down, we're just pushing it into place. Uh, you don't want smashed rice inside of the roll. You still want that rice to retain its texture. And you're just looking for kind of an even layer. If you've got bits of nori showing through, it's totally fine, it's not a big deal. Again, it's going on the inside, so not really much of a problem. Now what we wanna do, again, I'm gonna make kind of a neat checkerboard sushi roll. This is something I've not actually tried before, but I've always kind of wanted to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my salmon sort of in my roll here, like so. I'm gonna do the same thing with a piece of tuna. Now what I might need to do here is actually get a little bit of that scrap piece of tuna that I have and cut just a little bit of extra for the end of this roll so that it fills out the way I want it to. And do the same here with this little piece of salmon. And go ahead like so. So now I've got a piece of tuna and a piece of salmon that stretch all the way across. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add, before this, I went ahead and cut down some green onions and kind of thinly shaved them a little bit with my knife. You could use a full green onion if you wanted to, no big deal. Um, and I'm just gonna lay some down in the middle here, just as a little added greenage for my roll. And when I'm doing my rolls, I like to extend them out a little bit, you know, whatever you're making, just a little bit out past the end. Now with the green onion, I'm kind of doing it more on one side because I want that way for my presentation, which you will see once I'm all finished. But right now I've got my roll all set up and ready to roll. So now what we wanna do is take your fingers, dip them in a little bit of water, and flick off some of that extra water there. And then we're gonna drag our fingers lightly along the edge of the nori just to get it damp. This is gonna help it seal. Again, you don't want it wet, because then it's gonna start to curl and crinkle, and it's gonna be really hard to do. So now I'm gonna take my thumb and my pointer finger, like this, and I'm gonna pinch my nori mat and lift up. Now with my, oh no, I'm not done with this roll yet. You almost let me get away with this. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take another piece of tuna here. I'm gonna trim this down a little bit since it's kind of big. And I'm gonna lay this one over the top of the salmon. And again, I'm gonna use a little bit of this extra scrap here, here. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So I'm alternating, now I've got my salmon here here, this is salmon, and then I've got my tuna here. So they are cross each other on top. Now this is gonna be a pretty fat roll, so we'll see what I can do here. Now let's do this. So pointer finger, thumb, pinch. With your fingers, 
hold your ingredients, wrap and roll over. Now we're gonna tuck it in like so, and we're gonna roll. Again, this is turning out to be a really fat roll, which is fine. Now, you never really know if your roll is gonna hold until you remove your mat. So I'm just using my hands here to shape it. I'm not squishing the roll or holding it really tight. I don't wanna crush it. Again, I want my rice to be intact, um, but I just wanna shape it so that it's nice and round. So we'll go ahead and open this. And there we have a sushi roll. So now I'm gonna do this a little bit different. I'm going to take another piece of nori here. So I've got my shiny side and I've got my rough side. Now remember the fish, we always want to go on the rough side. The rough side is always gonna go in the roll. So for this one, I'm gonna trim just like I did before. Like so. Get rid of the rest. You can eat as a snack if you want. Now again, I've got my rough side and my shiny side. Now this time the rice is gonna go on the outside of the roll. So I want the shiny side facing up. So I'm gonna do exactly what I did before. Again, except this time the shiny side is facing up. I'm gonna dip my fingers. I'm gonna grab my rice. And this time I'm gonna spread the rice out to all four corners of the nori. Again, we want even coverage as much as possible. And this time we're gonna be a little bit more concerned about having any of the nori show through because again, this is gonna be on the outside of the roll. Again, if it's a little bit, it's not a big deal. It's not gonna wreck the roll. So, got a pretty nice thing going on here. I'm gonna dip my hands again. I'm gonna grab a little bit more rice. There it is. Okay, just sort of spread it out into place. Just like before, we're not looking to mash the rice or anything like that. We're just looking to kind of keep it in place. And there we go. Looking pretty good. Nice, good coverage. Now for this one, we're gonna do a little bit different. I'm gonna go ahead, I've got some tobiko here, which I'm gonna put on the outside. Now this is really for decoration. Around here, we like to refer to this as fish glitter because much like glitter, it gets everywhere. But it's also a lot of fun, makes your sushi rolls look really pretty. So I'm just gonna kind of sprinkle this around like so. Again, much like glitter, it sort of does what it wants, goes where it wants. But we want, you know, kind of nice, pretty coverage. It's going to make it look very, very nice. We do sell multiple colors of Tobiko, Masago, stuff like this, so we've got you covered. We also have a green one that's got a little bit of a wasabi flavor to it. All right, so we're looking pretty good here. Dip my hands again. So now is the tricky part of this roll, which is flipping it. When you go to flip your roll, you want to make sure that you do it in one nice, confident swoop. You don't want to like hold it up and have it dangle because then you run the risk of your rice falling off. So you really want to kind of grab it by the corners and just do a one, two, three flip, just like that. You don't want to be going back and forth, doing it over and over and over again, because then you run the risk of kind of ruining your roll. So for this one, let's go ahead. I've got some tuna. And you can see when I'm doing my rolls, I'm not putting it right at the end. I'm putting it just a little bit south of the middle. This one's also a little bit big, so I'm gonna trim it down. In fact, I'm gonna trim it all down. Like so. I'm gonna do the same thing with my salmon. This is gonna be, make this roll a little bit thinner than my other one. Because with the rice on the outside, sometimes it tends to be a little bit, a little bit thicker. So go ahead, put this across like so. Do the same thing with our tuna, like so. Let's nip this down just a touch, there. And sometimes you get a lot of copying, cutting and pasting, it's fine. Again, in the end, it's sushi and it's gonna be delicious. And that's really what matters. Add a little bit more greenage here. And then I will add 
Again, the opposite, so my salmon is gonna lay over the top of my tuna, like so. And then my tuna is gonna lay over the top of my salmon. We'll see how this works out. Hopefully it's nice and pretty the way I want it to be, but you know. You never know, and again, in the end, what you have is sushi, so it's hard to argue. So, okay, I've got my fish down, I got my green onions down. Now this time, we're gonna use the rice to hold the roll together, so I don't need to wet the end. All I need to do is actually roll the roll. So again, I'm gonna pinch with my pointer finger and thumb, I'm gonna lift up on the mat, and then with my fingers, I'm gonna hold my ingredients in, I'm gonna roll it over, like so, and I'm just gonna roll. And this is gonna give us our nice kind of inside out roll. Now some people like to coat the mat in plastic wrap before doing this, that's totally fine. You can absolutely do that if you want. I don't like using plastic wrap because it's a hassle um, and I don't think it's that big of a deal. So I've got my roll here and even though I just said I hate using plastic wrap, I do use it for cutting the roll. Um, it really helps cut because the rice is on the outside, it can be really difficult. Um, so I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. But first, let's cut our regular roll because it's kind of show, easier to show you what to do with this. So I've got my roll. And it's easier if you can let them sit and rest for a few minutes before cutting into it. Um, it always is gonna kind of help make things go a little bit easier. And the sharper knife you have for this, the better. So before I do this, I always like to at least hone my knife. This is gonna help make it a little bit easier to cut. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do this like so. Now when you're cutting sushi, you wanna try to cut in one fluid motion. You don't wanna be sawing back and forth because then you wind up smashing the rice and the roll uh, can fall apart on you. So as much to one cut as possible is great. I know from much experience that this knife will not cut through this roll in one nice fluid motion. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut once and then I'm gonna rock it back the other way. I'm not gonna move the knife out, I'm not gonna saw, it's gonna be a one, two cut. So I'm gonna start right in the middle, I'm gonna cut and I'm gonna rock it down. And now we've got a really nice looking sushi roll here. See in the middle the tuna, the salmon. It's very, very nice. And we're gonna continue doing the same thing. So I'm gonna find the halfway point again. I'm gonna cut, down. Halfway, cut, down. Halfway, cut, through. Now this is gonna help keep your rolls kind of uh, in similar size, which is nice. We're gonna want that. You wanna to try to keep everything as even as possible when you're making your sushi. So now we've got one roll cut. It has clearly been a while since I have done this, but that's totally fine. Let's move this out of the way. Now, the same is gonna be true with this roll. What we wanna do, as you can see, my knife has a lot of starch from the rice on there. You wanna wash that off because again, just like with our hands, um, what can happen is, is that starch can stick to the rice and start to pull things apart. So you wanna to try to keep as clean a knife as possible here, especially with these inside out rolls. Um, they can be very, very, very tricky, which is why we use the plastic wrap. So I've got a piece of plastic wrap here that I'm just gonna lay over my roll, like so. And this is gonna help me get kind of a starting cut because it's really hard to get your knife to cut through that rice without tearing it. So this is gonna give me a good little jump start. And we're gonna do just like we did before, find the middle part, do my one cut, and then down. And we're gonna keep doing the same thing. One cut, down. One cut. And we're looking to get eight pieces out of this. So it's pretty standard in terms of rolls. If you wanted to, you could cut them thinner. Again, these are pretty big rolls. But we've got ourselves some sushi. You can see how nice that looks there. Very pretty. And now we want to plate this, make it all look nice and pretty after all of our sushi work that we've done. So I've got a little platter here. 
And I'm gonna take my big end that I left kind of all this extra coming out of. I'm gonna flip it up like so. I'm gonna put this on the end like this. And then I'm gonna sort of do one of these things here. And these are pretty fat rolls. Nothing wrong with that. Very nice. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side with this roll. Put this here. Stack these at an angle, like so. Now tell me your family wouldn't love something like this. I've got my two more end pieces, which I'll just set right in the middle like so. We've got a nice looking little platter here. But we want to get our little additional accoutrement. We've got my pickled ginger. Beautiful. We sell this here, so definitely available. And I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of this right here on the end, like so. We've got my fancy tuba wasabi. Always helpful when we're making sushi. Go ahead and put a little bit of this down here at this end. Now this tube wasabi definitely packs a punch. There we go. Beautiful. And now we've got a very beautiful plate of sushi. Super easy. Takes a little bit of practice to get down. Mine aren't perfect either, which is fine. The point is, is it tastes good. Look at that beautiful platter there. Very easy to make. Beautiful tuna. Unbelievable Aura King salmon. Just excellent. So nice, so easy. And again, we've got some extra tuna. We didn't have any extra salmon, but what we can do with this is pretty easily make, you know, either some sashimi slices, or some poke. Um, in fact, I've got a pretty nice part of the top here. This actually works really well for sashimi. Let me just nip that end off a little bit. Go ahead and clean down my knife, like so. And then we just kind of thinly slice this. Again, we want to try to go for one fluid cut here. We're not trying to like rock back and forth or anything like that. We're gonna have some really nice slices of sashimi that can go very well with this plate. This last piece is always the hardest. Got some nice sashimi tuna there. And what we can do if we want, is we can grab another little platter. We can take some of our green onions, sort of bunch them up a little bit, break them up. If you let them sit in cold water a little bit, they'll get nice and curly for you, which will make this also very, very nice. So let's get, make a nice little bed here. Go ahead and do this. Now, got my nice little compostable cup here. And this, this is where a lot of places or people tend to go wrong when making sushi at home, uh, is using the wrong soy sauce. You want to use something that's meant for sushi and sashimi. Uh, we carry this here. We've got a lot of different varieties. 
Uh, we've got a lot of tamaris, which tend to work really nice, but you want a lighter soy sauce in general. So I'm gonna go ahead, add a little soy sauce to this cup for my sushi and sashimi plate, like so. Add this to my plate. And now, using what we had left over, we've got a very nice looking sashimi plate. Uh, I see somebody commenting to use a sashimi knife. That would be nice if you can have one of those. I like to show people how to do it. I do have a sashimi knife, but I like to show people how to you make sushi using what most people tend to have on hand, which is why I use the chef's knife. Um, the technique is a little bit different when you have one of these. I mean, the fundamentals are the same, but uh, again, this is a little bit harder, but it's more accessible. So I like to walk people through how to use this instead of encouraging them to go out and get a specialty knife that can cost a lot of money to make something that you might do once in a while. If you're making sushi a lot at home and it really is starting to become a passion of yours and you really enjoy it, by all means, invest in the knife, it's great. Um, having a good sushi knife is awesome. Um, if not, and it's the kind of thing you like to make once in a while, you can make it work with a sharp chef's knife. The sharper it is, the better and easier it's gonna be. Um, that's just always the case in terms of whether it's cutting your fish or, uh, or cutting your rolls. So again, we've got a beautiful sashimi plate here. We've got a beautiful sushi plate. Very not difficult to make. We've got all these fish on feature this week. We've basically got everything you need. We've got the sushi rice. We've got the uh, tobiko. We've got the nori. We've got the fish. We've got the wasabi, uh, the vinegar. So we've got the whole sushi set up. It would be cool to see if you're making sushi this weekend to go ahead and uh, do this. Make something like this. Take pictures of it. Send it to us. We always want to see what you're making. Tag us. We're all about sharing it too. Again, why not? We're all you know looking to have ways to have fun and making food and sharing it with your friends online. If you can't hang out in person, is a great way to do that. So. We, as always, we really appreciate everybody tuning in, hanging out with us. We hope you have a very safe and fun holiday weekend. Um, as far as holiday hours go, we are open tomorrow, normal, from 11 to 6. So you have time to stock up for whatever you're going to need for your holiday grill. Uh, we are closed on Saturday. We will not be open. So keep that in mind. Uh, but we will be open on Sunday from... 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. as usual. So normal hours, Friday and Sunday, but closed on Saturday. So if you need stuff for the 4th of July, come and see us either today or tomorrow. Most anything you get is gonna be totally fine as long as you keep it cold in the fridge for a few days. We also have sausages that you can grill too. We've got our whole Chef's Martins line. Uh, and a lot of you got to try those recently while we were doing um, sort of don donation sausages to help raise money for the community, which was cool. But uh, yeah, we got all kinds of stuff for your weekend. So come in, visit us today or tomorrow, and get loaded up for Saturday. Then have a ton of fun and stay safe, take pictures. We wanna see what you're doing. Remember, keep eating well, and we will see you next week. Have a good one.